Hey y'all, today I want to talk about audio clipping. What it is, what it's doing to audio, and once we understand what it's doing, how we might actually think about using it expressively. I'm going to work today a little bit in Audacity and a little bit in Max MSP. I know I often work in Pure Data because I like the accessibility of it, but I'm working in Max today because it has some helpful tools for visualization. Most everything that I'm showing is easily transferable over to Pure Data if you're interested. So first, our definition. Clipping is distortion that occurs when a device tries to represent a waveform beyond the maximum or minimum of that device. Now, when we talk about distortion, we're talking about a change in that waveform, a change in that sound from the original. So by definition, distortion is working against fidelity, fidelity being the faithfulness of the original sound. Of course, that said, there are aesthetic possibilities in moving away from fidelity. All right, to start with, I'm over here in Audacity, and we'll look at some digital clipping, some hard clipping. So I have this audio file, it's just me talking. Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. Okay, and now what I wanna do here is I just want to go and amplify it. Let's amplify it 24 decibels. So if I'm doing my math right, that's gonna be four times as loud. I'm gonna multiply this by four, all of these amplitudes by four. I'm thinking about that as six decibels as a doubling of amplitude. So we've got a lot of places here in this waveform that are then going to go beyond one and negative one in this case. So for example, this one's right at the top already, and we're gonna push that to be four times the size. So if we're calling this one, it's gonna be at four, which is way outside of what this system can represent. All right, let's listen to that. Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. I'm going to guess that probably when I'm editing this video, I'll probably turn that down. So let's look at this. I'm going to go over here and, and zoom out a second. And we'll notice that actually these haven't been clipped off. They're going beyond the range of the system. Again, this highlighted area here, negative one to one is the range that we can represent. And actually Audacity is keeping in mind uh, what else is going on. That's because we're in 32-bit float mode. So this is a good thing to know that I don't want to get into it here. I'll link my video about bit depth somewhere around here, maybe in the description. But by working in 32-bit float, actually it prevents things from clipping. And a lot of your DAWs are working internally at 32-bit float, but when you export your sound out or bounce your sound out, you might be converting that to 16. So let's do that conversion right now. I can do convert this to 16 bits, CD quality audio. All right, and now we can see that's all been cut off. Now let's have a look at what that actually means. So here are our samples, right? And we can see the samples that wanted to go beyond that negative one to one are now at that minimum, well, at that maximum here and at that maximum at the top too. Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. Okay, and we can hear that distortion. When we say it's been distorted, what does that actually mean? We've probably heard this crunchiness in clipped audio before, but let's have a look about what is actually going on. And so for that, I'm going to jump over to Max MSP. Okay, so I'm over here in Max. If you don't know anything about Max MSP, don't worry. I'm going to talk through everything that I'm doing, but also our point is to understand clipping, not how to build things in Max here. I'm going to start with an object. This is just something that's going to do something, and I'm going to make a sine wave oscillator at 100 hertz. And so I'm using this cycle to do that. And then I'm going to add another object and I'm going to make a DAC, a digital to analog converter. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is make a little attenuator here. So I'm, I'm creating a sine wave at 100 hertz at the maximum amplitude. I'm bringing it down to uh, 0.2 uh, amplitude and then running that out. And then I need to turn on my audio. Bink. There we go. Nice low sound. Now, I'm going to do a couple things as I've, I've threatened to help us visualize this. So I'm going to add a scope, which is going to give me an oscilloscope. And then once again, most of these ideas can be brought over to Pure Data pretty easily. But the reason I'm doing it in Max today is I can make these oscilloscopes and everything pretty easily. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a couple things to control the view of my scope, because this isn't a very nice way to look at that sine wave. So I did some research before 
And I actually probably don't need that because that's the default. But if I do this, ah, there we go. And now, beautiful sine wave. Now, what's interesting about sine waves is that they're made up of just a single frequency. And so let's look at this while we look at that oscilloscope. Let's look at this in a different way, too. All right. So now, in addition to this oscilloscope, this is a spectroscope or a spectrogram. So let's talk a little bit about that. So in this graph, this oscilloscope graph, this is time, right, going this way, and then this is amplitude. So we're showing the amplitude of that waveform over time. In this spectrogram, this is uh, amplitude or, or power, right? You'll notice it doesn't go negative, it's only positive. And then this is frequency. And so right now we've got a sine wave at 100 hertz, so we see just a single peak there at 100 hertz at that frequency. Once again, sine waves are simple waveforms that only contain one frequency. All right, so let's clip this. I'm going to use an object called Clip. And I, a couple weeks ago, I did a pure data patch from scratch video where I built some asymmetrical clipping, and we can try that out in a sec here, but that's not our main goal here. Okay, clip one to one. I'm going to detach these for a moment. Okay, so now I'm hard clipping this waveform from negative one to one. Now, since our sine wave started negative one to one, that doesn't do anything. By the way, please notice I'm attenuating down here just so we don't hear it quite as loud. So now what happens if I change this from negative one to one to negative 0.9 to positive 0.9? Ah, so now the top of my waveform is cut off and now we have all sorts of other harmonics. Let me even do this a different way. I'm gonna create a little friend here that controls the maximum, and then times negative one, right? So any number times negative one is gonna be its negative. So then if I put, if I put 0 0.9 in here, oh, I've done something silly. Pardon me one sec. That's my PD work in there. Let's try that again. There we go. We get the same thing. Now, look at all these wonderful harmonics. Watch what happens now. Now that I can control this, I can bring it down even more. Now our configurations are changing here a bit, but we're getting more harmonics. So look at what's happening to this waveform. We're getting closer and closer to having a square wave. Now, if we remember our complex periodic waveforms, we know that a square wave contains odd harmonics. And so for this sine wave, we're adding all of these harmonics, all of these frequencies that weren't originally there. Now, in the framework of synthesis, hey, maybe that's interesting. That's a, that's a neat thing to think about. But let's think back to that audio recording. Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. What's happening now in this speech is there's not a single sine wave, there's a whole bunch of frequencies that are working together to make this complex sound. And so when we start cutting off waveforms, we're adding tons and tons of harmonics in there. Now, of course, this is an important thing to know how to avoid. Pay attention to your levels, pay attention when you're recording, et cetera, et cetera. Getting into all that isn't really what I wanna talk about today. But okay, once we know how to avoid it, let's think about the aesthetics of this. One way of thinking about it, I'm going to take a quote from Brian Eno, A Year with Swollen Appendices from 1995. Whatever you now find weird, ugly, uncomfortable, and nasty about a new medium will surely become its signature. CD distortion, the jitteriness of digital video, the crap sound of 8-bit, all of these will be cherished and emulated as soon as they can be avoided. Okay, so here we are over 25 years later, and sure enough, we have genres like vaporwave, lo-fi hip-hop, where you can definitely say these aesthetics are being cherished and emulated. Eno's quote goes on, though, 
It's the sound of failure. So much modern art is the sound of things going out of control, of a medium pushing to its limits and breaking apart. The distorted guitar sound is the sound of something too loud for the medium supposed to carry it. The blues singer with the cracked voice is that sound of an emotional cry too powerful for the throat that releases it. The excitement of grainy film, of bleached out black and white, is the excitement of witnessing events too momentous for the medium assigned to record them. So now we've got a medium that can't contain our sine wave. Now if I turn this all the way down, maybe I... I don't want this one here. Okay, while we're talking about this hard clipping, let's look a little bit at some soft clipping too. What I'm about to throw in here is not actually in Pure Data Vanilla. So up until this point, the only thing you'd have to do to get this all to work in, in Pure Data would be to change this cycle to an OSC, and you'd have to do some more sophisticated stuff to get these visualizations. This is downloadable as an object though. I'm gonna do tan H, which is the hyperbolic tan function. Now this is neat. Let's check it out. So if I just run this in and start the sound. We're back to our sine wave. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to take our sine wave and I'm going to make it louder. So multiplying it by one, one times any number is going to be that same number, so we don't need to worry about that. So that's just the same thing still. Let's make a little control here. Okay, now I'm multiplying it by a very small number. But watch what happens as I get louder when I go beyond one where it should be clipping, right? So it's not clipping, right? Let's stop this and have a look at what's going on. Ooh, okay, that's not a sine wave, but it's not a square wave because it's got these little round things. So it's been a while since I've done my trigonometry properly, but tan H, the hyperbolic tan, basically the way that it's working is as something gets closer and closer to one, it gets attenuated more and more. So really this tan H is kind of a cheap math-based compressor. I actually have an analog one of these in my Eurorack as well, but it's a neat idea. So now we're no longer hard clipping, we're soft clipping. This happens in a lot of analog media too. Again, it's not a hyperbolic tan function, but when you record to magnetic tape, because you're coming up against physical limitations of magnetism as opposed to the digital numbers within a computer, you can get this kind of soft clipping instead. Again, a good aesthetic tool to have in your toolbox. So this is already three times as loud, four times as loud. And you can see the harmonics are different too than when I was just doing the hard clipping. One last thing, again, I did this in that other video, is we could do asymmetrical clipping. So once again, cycle going in there. I didn't give this values. We'll go negative one, one. So that's, once again, not clipping at all. And I can send different numbers to each of these. So I could, for example, oops, I've disconnected from the oscilloscope, that's why that's not updating. Let's make that look nice. There we go, there's our sine wave again. I could, let me move this so we can see it a bit better. I could set this to be negative 0.5 and leave this one at one. So now if these were both at 0 0.5, uh, uh, negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, we get this kind of clipping. But now it's asymmetrical because I've made one side clip and the other side not clip. Again, different harmonic idea.
And all of these ideas are affecting the timbre of the sound. Okay. Open to open a file, toggle to turn it on. This will just play in audio files. Let's open something. Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. Okay, we didn't hear it much there. Hi there, I'm talking about... Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. I guess one thing I could do rather than constantly triggering it is I could put in a loop. Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. 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 Really hear the mouth Hi pops there, in there. <laughs> Hi there, I'm talking about clipping. 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 Okay, so what? First, clipping is a type of distortion. In the case of hard clipping, like happens in most digital systems, we're gonna be adding harmonics. All of those rounded peaks of our waveforms get squared off. So. Just like a square wave has more harmonics than a sine wave, we're adding a whole bunch of harmonics. We need to be able to avoid this if we don't want that to happen. We solve that with good practice in game structure, etc. But since there's no right and wrong in music and art, we can step back from our concerns about fidelity and embrace this increase in harmonics. And there are a whole bunch of musical examples of this, but also in sound design for films and other media too. We can embrace these aesthetics of failure the media's limitation in expressing what needs to be said. This clipping can be another useful aesthetic tool in our toolbox.